Our first scripture reading today comes from Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. And this can be found on page 1,752 of your pew Bibles. <clears throat> Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> This has always been one of my favorite Bible verses ever since I discovered it a couple of years ago. And I think part of the reason that is is because even though Paul is telling us that we're going to basically have this difficult life, which isn't the most positive of images, he's also telling us that there will always be this hope for us to hold on to in times of darkness. And I think it's really important to know how opposite these two ideas are, this idea of suffering and this idea of hope. But Paul does not talk about them exclusively of each other but actually bridges them together. He uses hope as what we should hold on to in times of darkness, and I think that is what is at the heart of his message. The idea of everyone's suffering is actually key in Paul's writing, and while most people might find this to be a little bit morbid, if we look closely at what Paul is trying to express in Romans 5, we can see that there's actually so much more depth to it than just that, and just everyone having a miserable life. And I actually love that Paul reminds us that everyone is going to have difficult times, because he sees these times as much more than just moments where we're struggling to get by. He sees them as a chance to realize the hope in our lives and grow towards being able to grasp onto the hope that God has poured out into our hearts. But Paul, even in his excitement of this hope, also realizes that moving from suffering to hope isn't all about one big movement, and it doesn't happen overnight. He realizes that there is a period of growth that takes place and a transition. Growth occurs in steps, just as transitions take time. Transitions are one of the most difficult things that we go through in our daily lives, and they require a lot of patience, optimism, and ultimately a trust in God that everything is going to be okay. And this is not easy because transitions often test our focus on God and sometimes manifest our wavering commitment to Him. For me, and I'm sure for many other graduating seniors, I have struggled with the transition to moving from high school and what is known to college, which is completely unknown and foreign to me. It hasn't always been easy that God will be with me every step of the way. But by reminding myself of his presence in my life and rejoicing in the hope that his promises to us bring, I know that I will have something to hold on to whenever I go through a difficult time. And I think it's important to note that even in my experiences, I have seen Paul's words to be true. And even though I have been fortunate enough to not have gone through anything significant, I have still been able to learn and understand the importance of holding on to the hope that God has poured out into our hearts. In these moments of transition, change, and suffering, we may feel like there isn't any way to continue on or may feel lost, uncertain, or hopeless. Paul's letter is not supposed to emphasize how our struggles will be miserable, but instead reignite hope and remind us that we shall glory in our sufferings by holding on to the hope that God has promised to us. And that is the second part of Paul's letter in Romans 5. He acknowledges that everyone will suffer, but even though we will suffer, we will inevitably persevere because of the hope that God's love provides. We hope because we have experienced persecution during times of suffering, and we hope because we realize God's unconditional and eternal love for us. And that is a powerful thing. And I love Paul's wording here because he does not just say that God's love is there. He says that God's love has been poured out into our hearts. And this presents an incredibly uplifting message that is meant to inspire us in difficult times. While transitions through life may include times of struggle with maybe the death of a loved one or a son or daughter moving on to college or even the loss of a job, we recognize that the journey will not be easy. But in the face of transitions, we can rely on this hope that God has given to us and that he will continue to give us good things in our lives. And knowing this, we are capable of persevering through anything. It is in recognizing God's promises to us 
that we find hope and the courage in ourselves to continue on in difficult times. Hope does not put us to shame, but pushes us to rejoice in our sufferings and be reminded of God's unconditional love for us. It is here that we realize Paul is not advocating a morbid view on life, as maybe the external views of the passage might suggest, but instead a joyous and triumphant one, as we recognize God's eternal love and the hope that it provides in our lives. As graduation nears and all the seniors prepare to embark on the newest journey of going off to college, I know that I'm no longer nervous or afraid. I know that there will be times where I will be tested or may go through a difficult challenge, but I know that I can persevere through these times by holding on to the hope that God has instilled in my heart and reminding myself of God's unconditional love. Knowing that my suffering will not be in vain, but allow me instead to work towards bridging the gap between suffering and hope gives me the courage I need to continue on in times of struggle. I charge you to go from this place with the same mindset and to always remember God's love and the promises he has made to us. Do not be discouraged by any thoughts of struggles or challenges that we may face ahead, but instead be glorified in your sufferings by always holding on to the love that God has poured out into our hearts. We have been called to have hope during times of suffering. By reminding ourselves of God's love, we can work towards bridging the gap and be confident that God's promises to us will ultimately be fulfilled. Amen.